home cooking for the holidays, coming up on Great Bites. Hi, I'm Lee Lopez with Great Bites, and welcome to a special holiday edition of our program. Our special guest chefs today are people who you've seen on Deltona TV before, and they will be sharing special holiday recipes with you that bring the holidays to them. Jerry Mays hosts Dollars and Cents Keep the Business Going and Deltona's Audubon Explorer. His kitchen creation has its roots in the great outdoors, Southern Hunt Camp Baked Beans. Start off basically with two 16 ounce cans of bushes baked mm -hmm. beans. Okay. okay, say that fast three times. Yeah. Okay? The baked beans are sort of a blend of very, very hot and very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, on the hot side, we'll be using crushed red pepper. Okay. Um, I have to be very careful picking this up. It's nuclear, okay? okay. You're supposed to use tongs and things like that. It's sriracha okay. seasoning, okay? Okay. And, I mean, we're going to use just a little bit of that. I pre-measured it out right okay. here, that type of thing. Okay. Uh, we have some molasses. Okay. Okay. And for the salty side mm -hmm. of it, um, we have country ham. Oh, okay. Now, this is that dark red. Mm-hmm. Take a taste. And so you have basil also? Uh, yeah, we have basil. Basil gives another little bit of sweetness to go with it. It's often mm -hmm. called sweet basil. Okay. okay. And all these are dried. Okay. And I use some uh, barbecue sauce. And as you can see, this is hot barbecue <laughs> sauce. Okay? okay. Again, lending to the sweet and the hot mm -hmm. flavors that go together. With a bell mm -hmm. pepper, I always like to take off this inner that membrane. membrane. Okay. Uh, it's the membrane that holds the seeds, and the reason I take it off, it has a different flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And if you cook it in with your food, it'll change the taste of it. This is really sort of bitter. Okay, so that's our bell pepper. And you, mm -hmm. uh, again, can see the size mm -hmm. of... The size of the dice? Yeah. Size so, of the dice. So now with the uh, onion, mm -hmm. is it pretty much the same thing? Pretty much so. In other words, when, when I dice an onion, mm -hmm. I first slice it long, mm -hmm. like so. And because I'm basically a lazy person, I'll just take the whole thing mm -hmm. at that point and say, one, two, three. Okay, I'm bring the frying pan over, watch the stove. It's, it's hot, it's mm -hmm. heating up, okay. We'll set this up here. Okay, so we have the onions, we have the bell peppers all together. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we're going to dump in the country ham on top of that. Okay, Jerry, so you mm -hmm. have all the, the veggies, the bell pepper, the onion, and mm -hmm. the country ham sauteing. What should somebody look for as far as, you know, when the vegetables are ready? Well, they're getting pretty close to ready now. If, mm -hmm. you, if you could see here into the spoon, yeah. you can see the, ve uh, the especially the onions are mm -hmm. getting translucent. They yeah. get a shininess to them, mm -hmm. uh, become a little opaque instead of solid white you can't see through. It's almost like they're, you know, dirty glass now that you can okay. look through. Um, when you're sautéing them, mm -hmm. pay a lot of attention to them. Don't set them on the stove and walk off or anything. You've got to stay here with them. This recipe for the campfire baked beans, where did this come from? Is this like an old family recipe? Is this a new recipe? Well, I'm not going to say, you know, it's been passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. I, I basically lost, learned it from my father okay. uh, who fixed baked beans. Uh, same tradition as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. um, this was in North Carolina where uh, we hunted there. I've been cooking it <clears throat> for 45 years. Yeah. Dad was cooking it for 35 or 40 mm -hmm. years prior to that. So it has some history to it. Oh yeah, 80, 90 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's within two or three. Mm -hmm. My son has fixed it also. That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah. Is this one of those? Oh yeah, we pass like it down. Like a legacy recipe that yeah. from one to another to another? Yeah. Okay, so that should be about ready? It's ready. I mean, you, you if you look at in here now, you yeah. can see, especially the smaller pieces of mm -hmm. onion, um, have they're, lost the whiteness. Mm -hmm. They've got that, you know, clear look to them and like that. The, and they've gotten softer also. And oh, the yeah. bell pepper. Yeah, and the bell pepper here, you can see how it's gotten translucent mm -hmm. now. 
Okay, and uh, when you yeah. mix everything up, so mm -hmm. you, uh, you're looking at mixing up the, uh, the beans, and then you're going to put the uh, seasonings in next. With your bell peppers and, and the onions. And the bell peppers and the onions, and we're going to put that into it now. Pour to the center of your casserole dish, not to the edge. Okay. So and, there's, and let it have a second to work its way down. 425. Okay. okay, and it's going to cook for approximately 40 minutes in a preheated oven. Around the dinner table, it'll serve, what I fix will serve six or eight people at the hunting camp about four. Okay. Uh, it goes a lot faster there. Mm-hmm. Hearty appetites? Hearty appetites out, you know, out in, out in nature, and mm -hmm. of course it's colder weather and everything like that, so uh, pack the beans on. Jerry, mm -hmm. excellent. I'm glad Very you enjoyed good. it. And happy holidays. Thank you much. I enjoyed fixing it for you. It's very good. If you know food trucks, you know Curtis Bright. He and his wife operate the SWAT truck, Skewers with Attitude. Curtis will show us how to use holiday meal leftovers to create an easy and great tasting bite to eat. Today we are going to make ham, onion, and pineapple uh, shish kebabs along mm -hmm. with our mashed sweet potato with pecans. Cool. Now, what all goes into everything? Uh, everything here is going to consist of your leftover holiday mm -hmm. or overbought ingredients. It's a good way to jazz up those leftovers. Okay. Of course, we have ham. It's chunked up. Uh, pineapple, uh, white Vidalia onion, and that's going to take care of your uh, skewers. Okay. Uh, for your mashed potatoes, you're going to use sweet potato and russet potato. Okay. You're also going to use uh, kosher salt. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a pinch of cayenne, uh, half a cup of milk, black pepper, a uh, third of a cup of chopped pecans and either some leftover gravy or mango chutney and that'll be for your skewer. We'll tell you about that here in a sec. As well as uh, brown sugar, uh, black pepper, a bit of oil, uh, and that looks to be about it here. Okay, so you have this, the sweet potatoes and russets on the boil, yep. right? Sweet potatoes and russets have been cooking for about 15 minutes. They're fork tender. Okay. Take a look at those. This is a stick and a half of butter. You're going to throw in just about all your butter, but we're going to hold back uh, a two teaspoons of it here. Okay. And that's going to be for another ingredient here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to just throw that in. We're also going to throw in our kosher salt. Okay. Been doing this for a while, so I can yeah. do this here. And our dash of the cayenne. And we're just going to begin to mix these here. Okay. We're going to mix these up. Okay. Pour in our milk. We're going to okay. have it be a room temperature, and that's a half a cup. Okay. Oh, so the the milk has to be at room temperature? Room temperature. That's okay. what you wanted that to get that consistency. We don't want to uh, shock the potatoes and make them cold too soon. It'll oh, be a bit okay. premature. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. We'll see how they're starting to take on that yeah. smooth consistency. Mm -hmm. This is uh, plain and simple. Uh, mm -hmm. The easiest thing you'll do in terms of this whole entire recipe. I'm going to go ahead and step yeah. over here. Uh, we've already chopped up and chunked out our onions as well as our mm -hmm. ham. We're going to go ahead and break down our onion. I'm just yep. going to cut off the ends. Okay. We're going to quarter this here. Well, we're going to half it first. And then we're going to go ahead and quarter it out. We're going to try to get four cups out of those here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our meat first. And then we're going to do our pineapple. I'm sorry, excuse me, our onion, and then our pineapple. Okay. And then we're just going to do that one more time. Just going to repeat that. And the onion and the pineapple. Okay, now when you put them on the grill, on this griddle pan, mm -hmm. that's on like medium high, I mean medium low? Yeah, it's on a medium. I throw a little bit of oil in mine just to give it a little simmer. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically just to 
give it that grilled taste as well. Okay. And even for extra measure, I'll take that black pepper that we spoke of on yeah. the ingredients list, and sometimes I'll just hit it with a bit of that, mm -hmm. just so it has a little bit of a counter taste to it, especially with the pineapple, you always mm -hmm. want to do that. Con mix here in the back, I have a uh, small skillet here. We're yep. gonna throw that salted butter in. Okay. That we had held back from before. I'm okay. just gonna go ahead and melt this down here. I see it start to bubble. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in. Okay. Because this is gonna happen very, very quickly. Okay. And, and that's just, ahead. is that just like regular brown sugar? Yeah, regular brown sugar. Okay. And that's two teaspoons of it here. Okay. And you see how it's starting to happen just that oh, quick. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's start, starting to glaze the pecans. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to glaze these with the uh, mango chutney. And this is also going to caramelize right into the skewer as it mm -hmm. cooks as well. And then, excuse me, I'm going to flip these bad boys. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other side because we want this all to cook in. And it looks like our skewers are all set and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plate these here, like so. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna take this pan here off of the heat. And now we have our finished product. Our ham, onion, and pineapple skewers, along with our pecan, sweet potato, mash mix. Elizabeth Reyes Rufa hosts the medical show A Tu Salud, and she's fixing a side dish that she calls her favorite comfort food. Today we're going to fix guineitos en escabeche, okay. which is a traditional Puerto Rican dish for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, for the American audience, it would be it's a banana side dish okay. that has a little bit of a vinegar sauce to it. Okay, cool. So it's almost, like I said, it's a side dish. I guess the, the, the tartness of vinegar. You know, that helps cut like a lot of the richness that you would get with other, yeah, other foods. Yeah, yeah, because our, our traditional meals for the holidays mm -hmm. are very heavy and very rich and uh, very uh, spicy sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you want to have something that's on the lighter fare, yeah. something that's going to cut through that uh, rich, uh, the fat and mm -hmm. the juices and all of that, okay. you know? Okay, so what all do we have? And okay, so to get started with this dish, you're going to want to have some... Uh, bananas these are bananas not plantains mm -hmm. um, but you want to get them as green as possible okay and you want to get these in to get started first before the sauce what are you going to do you, you, you boil them yeah i boil them mm -hmm. and uh, something very important when you go to boil green bananas is mm -hmm. you want to go ahead and put a little bit of milk in your water okay you want to put a little bit of salt because bananas tend to be a little bit on the bland side when yeah. they're green mm -hmm. and then you want to leave the skin off you don't want to cut these uh, before boiling them mm -hmm. because otherwise they'll get a little too mushy yeah. for you. And one thing you want to do so that it's easy to peel later is mm -hmm. you want to go ahead and cut a slit through the side and you don't really want to cut them up too small yet. Again, yeah. trying to avoid that mushiness. Yes. So all I do is go ahead and cut them in half after that slit mm -hmm. and then we go ahead and put them in the boiling water. Okay. Okay. And like we said, we want to leave them boiling for about 20 minutes. Okay. That's just, just about the right time. You're gonna add all these ingredients that we have here. We're gonna have olive oil, about a half cup of olive oil. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have about another half cup of vinegar. Okay, so. White, any kind of white vinegar will work. This is okay. distilled white, but rice white vinegar will work. Okay, so a half cup of olive oil, half a cup yeah. of white vinegar, okay. You're gonna wanna have your salt, about a teaspoon of salt. Okay. You're gonna wanna have another teaspoon of pepper, black okay. pepper. 
And this dish is interesting because that kind of gives it the immediate flavor. Mm -hmm. Again, bananas tend to be a little bit bland. Yeah. But this kind of gives it that long-lasting flavor, mm -hmm. these peppercorns. And so you want to have okay. about 10 to 12 peppercorns in Whole there as peppercorns. well. And then you're going to also want to have these uh, bay leaves. Okay. You're going to have about four bay leaves okay. all together. And those are sit there. And here's, you know, four cloves of garlic mm -hmm. crushed. Okay. Also really important. And then this is a big part of the dish. You mm -hmm. want to saute these onions mm -hmm. and that vinegar and that oil, it's going to sort of, they're going to absorb all that flavor. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need to cook this down for about uh, an hour. Okay. For this particular recipe, the amounts that I mentioned, mm -hmm. you're going to want about 10 green bananas. Okay. And the greener, the better. Don't, okay. don't be afraid of the green banana because what the more green they are, they're mm -hmm. going to be starchy and they're going to taste more like a vegetable than a fruit. This is a traditional dish and it's always, typically I ate it on, on the, during the holidays, mm -hmm. so that's what I associate it with. And over time, I think, I don't know, it's because I've moved all over the country yeah. and so I've, I've really missed it. So mm -hmm. I've incorporated it as part of my, my routine and mm -hmm. what I make for the holidays. What you wanna do, see, that's why we had the little slit we did before, okay. because it's gonna come off nice and easy. Mm -hmm. When they're green, this doesn't come off easily. So that's why we did it that way. Okay. Um, and then you want to cut them in about one inch rounds okay. or so diagonally. And mm -hmm. then we're going to go ahead and start with our onions and our garlic. Okay. Okay, so all those lovely onion rounds that mm -hmm. we made, we're going to go ahead and start them so they can begin softening. You okay. Them down. Okay. Can go. It's not too hot, so I can go yeah. ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to splash yep. back okay. at me. Now that you have all your ingredients yeah. in here, you don't want a big clump of pepper or mm -hmm. salt sticking somewhere. So you want to go ahead and stir your ingredients together so mm -hmm. that they're blended. And so those onions are nice and coated with the oil and vinegar. Okay. And then we're going to let that cook down for about an hour. Okay. On, like you said, on low. On low. So now we're going to put the finishing touches on this. We have our bananas, they're nice boiled, they're mm -hmm. cooled down. And we have our onion mixture, our escabeche sauce, which is the onions are nice and soft, the garlic is blended through. So what we do is we're just gonna go ahead and pour this right over the bananas. Okay, let's be careful if you just cook this, it might be a little hot. But we want to mix it up. Some people like to do the dish with, mm -hmm. the, with the olives. Okay. And so we can garnish it with a little green olives and pimentos. Makes it nice and pretty and festive too. You wanna to keep this really colorful and beautiful. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The um, colors really look good because if you say, you eat with your eyes as well. And I'll be preparing one of my grandmother's favorites, shrimp South Louisiana, a Creole dish. And this is what goes in it. Six green onions, five tablespoons of vegetable oil, a clove of garlic, salt and pepper to taste, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of chopped celery, one whole onion that'll be chopped, a quarter cup of diced red bell pepper, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a can of diced tomatoes that includes jalapeno and another can of diced tomatoes. And because this is a shrimp dish, two pounds of peeled shrimp. So to start with shrimp South Louisiana, there are a couple of things that we still need to chop up. One of them will be the green onions. So let's line the little guys up and behead them, so to speak. We'll just like move them off to the side. And we're looking at not a huge dice, but about like so. And we're going to include the white and the green parts. Now we're going to use our onion. We're going to finish chopping him. I said this is a whole onion that you want to chop him up. 
And you don't want to get too fine of a dice because all these vegetables are going to be cooking in a roux, which is essentially hot oil and flour cooked together. And you don't want them to disappear. You want them to still have some kind of texture. And we already have some of the pepper chopped, so we don't need to get a whole lot. There we go. And part of you will be going back into the jar. This is, cutting this guy is really pretty easy. Let's go ahead and fix our roux. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to have five tablespoons of vegetable oil and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. The burner is set on about medium high. You don't want it too high because you don't want to scorch the roux. There's nothing worse than burned flour. So get your vegetable oil, pour it into the pot. You'll hear different terminologies with roux. Uh, you'll hear them described as a blonde roux or a peanut butter roux, a chocolate roux or a coffee roux. Now, obviously that's not the way they're going to taste, but that's the color of the roux because that's what you're looking for. A quarter cup of all-purpose flour, and we sprinkle this in, and it starts to sizzle. The trick to cooking a roux is once you've done what I do, you don't stop, because flour burns very quickly. The roux that we're going for, the chocolate roux, it's about between 18 to 21 minutes. Okay, we've been cooking for oh, about five to six minutes now, and this is the color that you're looking at. This is a blonde roux. And if you can see it, it's kind of, it's a real pale color. Okay, the roux has been cooking for about 15, 16 minutes. And now it's at the stage where it's a peanut butter roux. And that, like I said, that's the color. You can tell the color has gotten darker. The roux has been cooking for right about 20 minutes, a little bit more. But it's a milk chocolate color incorporate all the veggies so everything is coated and what you want the vegetables to do is you just want them to get soft and somewhat translucent and I said this will take about 10 minutes now we're going to add the canned tomatoes and the canned tomatoes with the jalapeno and you want to include the juice because that helps keep the uh, the, the moisture we're going to simmer this on medium to low heat for about 30 minutes covered because you don't want to lose any of the volume you just want this to cook through now we add our shrimp and since shrimp really aren't that picky about who goes in first go ahead and put the cover on it because like I said you don't want to reduce it as far as the liquid you want to keep that because you'll be serving this over rice so in 15 minutes We'll be eating. Nice big serving right over the rice. We met Alberto de Jesus at the Cocky Rooster Cafe, and the restaurant's pastry chef will show us how to fix a holiday favorite cookie, coquitos. Okay, so what do we have? How right, right now we're gonna use one and a quarter pound of sugar, granulate sugar. Just regular sugar? Just regular sugar. Okay. Put it in there. And it's then, one, one and a quarter pound? One and a quarter okay. pound. We're gonna use the same with cocoa flakes. Okay. Not powder or flour, no, but coconut flakes. It's cocoa flakes. Okay. Then you can shorter or uh, you just the same amount to make that uh, coconut. Okay. And we're going to use also a teaspoon of salt. Right, and it's like regular salt? Regular salt. Okay. 
we're gonna use corn syrup. Okay. And it's to make that coconut uh, moisty. Okay. Now, how much uh, how much corn syrup it's, is that? Uh, uh, half a cup. Half, half a, cup? a cup. Yep. Then, before I use the egg white, we're gonna put in a mixer to mix this up. Now, how long does this mix? Uh, it's gonna take almost three minutes okay. in medium speed. Okay. I just want to every everything is mixed together. Now, how many egg whites? Uh, Sixteen ounces. Sixteen ounces of egg whites. Egg white. Okay. And you turn this back on, and then you just slowly you slowly pour it in. Right. Right. Now, how long will it will it mix until it's just all together? Yep. Uh, I just waiting uh, around one minute more mm -hmm. to see the everything incorporate, and then when is everything, I just take it out from the machine. Now, how many cookies will this make? It's around seventy. Seventy. Yeah, seventy coquitos. So that's in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. They call it coquitos. Yeah, it's it's like a paste, right? right yeah. It's right. like a, like a, it is. It forms like its own dough. Right. You just press a little bit, okay, and make a rum. Okay, it's like a rosette. Yeah. I'm gonna cook in 325 for 15 minutes. Okay. Then I take it out and leave outside for 10 minutes to, to get let it cool down. Cool down. Okay. Those are our favorite holiday recipes, and we hope you'll give them a try for your family this holiday season. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned to Deltona TV for more Great Bites.